Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a shout out to my 18,000, almost 900 Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. Greetings. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. Greetings and welcome. My topic today is don't do the abominable things the Most High God hates. Again, don't do the abominable things that the Most High God hates. Israel, in order to in order for you to know your Elohim or your God, you have to know the things that he loves and the things that he hates. Some of you might ask yourself or, or others, how am I supposed to know what the Most High God loves and hates? It's simple. You go to his book and read. You know, I'm going to keep it at that level because of, you know a lot of you guys that are in the truth know what the Most High God loves and hate and you should if you have gotten past the milk of his word and have repented and have grown and you know have been have been have gotten past the milk of his word that 18 to 24 month period you would know what the Most High God loves and hate if you were diligent in his word but I'm talking to those that are on the peripheral or those who don't know. So those are on the peripheral of of, 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 in, of being in this truth, they've heard some heard some lessons on YouTube or uh, you know, listen to some of the Hebrew brothers, you know, and, and their music or something, but that's all they they they, they have done and, and haven't really gotten the word of, of the Most High God. Those are the people I'm going to focus on. And some of you guys, you know, that are in the truth, you can you can listen. Maybe you learn something new. Maybe not. All right. Isaiah 34 and 16. Speak ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. The Most High God instructs you in everything. Now, there are many out there, including among the body of the Israelites, who likes to put additional words in the Most High God's mouth to support their doctrine. But as the word says, let God be true and every man a liar. Read that, Romans 3 and 4, Dominique. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified by saying, it might overcome without our judge. Interpret the word. Interpret the words as it is written. So that you can be justified in what you say. As it's written, that's how you are justified in, in your sins. When you read the word of the Most High God, it is as, as it is written. That's, as, that's how it's interpreted. As it is written. Now, there are some things that might be hard for you to understand because they have a, a additional meanings based upon precepts that must be upon precept. Line upon line, here little and there little, to get the understanding of some of the Most High God, uh, of, of some of His words. Because you know what? It's, uh, his topic is going to be discussed in more than one area. Because the Most High God doesn't change. Let's get back to our lesson. The Most High God have constantly sent His prophets on his behalf to tell them to stop doing the abominable things that he hates. Read that, Jordan. Jeremiah 44 and 4. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Again, what are the things that the Most High God hates? I'm going to show you that it is written throughout this Bible, including in Genesis. However, I'm going to start 
when Israel became a nation and made a covenant with the Most High God. I can go back to Genesis and show you the same things that he hate are relevant today. The same things that he hate caused the earth to be destroyed in the beginning. As he caused the world, his world, to be destroyed today. Back then to now, his world, has, his world of Israel has been destroyed based upon the same things that he hated in the beginning. Number one, I'm just going to give you some of the things that the Most High God hates. The Most High God hates when the Israelites worship other gods. His is the law that we violate. When we worship other gods. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Now, this is the law that we violate when we worship other gods. Give me that law. Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, you know, my birthday is, is cool. Read that again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No, I just want to, you know, you know, do it for the kids. Read that again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It, it doesn't matter what the most what your child think about all of these things. When you're worshiping your birthday, you're putting you're elevating yourself above the Most High. You doing it for the kids? Most High God kill you and your kids. Very simple. Very simple. This law is very simple. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Can you say it in a different way, Dominic? Say it in a different way. I have no way above God. Okay, Jordan, say it in another way. It's plain and simple. Say it in another way. It's so plain you can say it so many different ways. Don't put nothing above me. Nothing. Very simple. Plain as day and night. Not multi-structured. Hard to understand. Because of the complexity of the sinners. It's not hard to understand because the sinners is so complex that you'd be like, man, I'm trying to break this down to understand what it's saying. It's, I, I can't understand this. It's so simple. This simple. This this sentence is simple, not very wordy, not not wordy at all. Simple to the point. The most I got made it this way to not confuse any of us. However, as soon as this commandment was chiseled in stone, it was quickly violated. Let's get let's get where it was violated. First Kings. 11 and 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth. He did what? For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. I'm going to tell you how relevant, how, how this, how Solomon cursed his whole nation even until today. Because these gods that he went after are the st same gods that are we are worshiping today in our communities. Let's get let's get an understanding of Asterisk. Read that, Jordan. Astarte is the Hellenized form of the Middle Eastern goddess as Asterisk. Okay, Astarte is the read that in parentheses. In parentheses, Astarte. You ain't gotta read that first part, but the second part. It's the Greek form of, of the word. Astarte. Come on. Astarte, Greek, is the Hellenized form of the Middle Eastern goddess Astarot, Northwest Semitic, a form of Ishtar, East Sem Semitic, worshipped from the Bronze Age through classical in iniquity and in antiquity. So, this guy had been worshipped a very long time before the white man even showed up. Okay, come on, continue on. 
The name is particularly associated with her worship in the ancient Levant among the Canaanites and the Phoenicians. 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 She was also celebrated in Egypt following the port importation of the Levantine cults there. Okay. This is... It's a starchy. That guy been around. It, it was ISIS and... It was ISIS and during, the, during the Egyptian period. This guy has been around in the captivities that we were in. And we still... We're working, you know, Solomon brought that God into into Egypt, into into Israel, and we have not been able to get rid of this God yet. Ishtar is Easter. Astarte, Astareth, Ishtar, Easter, all the same guys. And this white man has brought has brought these guys in, just ported them in because he didn't create these gods. They was already here. Before he took power, they were already here. He just called them something else. This is present day Easter. This God has been in Israel since King Solomon opened the door, and we have not been able to shut the door to this God yet. Let's get some understanding on Milk or uh, Molech. Dominic, read that. There are a number of Canaanite gods with names based on this root, which became similarly associated with, the, with Molech, including, including biblical Malcolm. Great King, which uh, which appears to refer to a god of the Ammonites, as well as Tyrian, your yeah, Tyrian, yeah. Okay, come on. Tyrian Belcar and others. Okay, abortions are a form of worshiping Milcom uh, Molech. The simplest form of worship this did is was sacrificing your children by fire to this god. So. We were sacrificing our kids to these to, to these guys. Now we when we go take take out ourselves uh, take uh, unwanted children to the abortion uh, these baby women going to the abortion clinic and having an abortion. You worshiping Molech, a Malcolm, whether you want to or not. It, it ain't your intention to to worship him, you know. But. You are worshiping Molech. It's just simple as that. Continue, First Kings eleven six. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did evil and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Let me ask y'all something. Have anybody considered the difference between evil and sin? What's the difference? Uh, you want to commit evil, but it's sin. No. It's probably versa, vice versa. Think, think that thought through vice versa. Reverse that. Anybody can sin, but evil is whenever you know. There you go. Sin. Come come on. Like when you know you're doing something wrong, you do it anyway. That's what evil is. Anybody can sin. You can sin and don't know it. Evil is sinning and knowing you're sinning. Knowing that there's something wrong and you're doing it anyway. Anybody can sin. You can sin and just, man, I didn't even know that. And somebody can tell you, bro, you know, you know that sin, man. What do you mean that sin? You don't supposed to do that. You know you're supposed to be eating pork. But evil is knowing pork is not clean and, and you don't supposed to eat it according to what the most like God told you to do. And you just do it anyway, man. Hell with that. I'm eating this pork. That's evil. That's what Solomon. Why was Solomon was doing evil? Why would you think? Why would he say that? Because he knew the law, but he was following it. Why? Why did Solomon know the law? Think of who Solomon was. He was King David's uh, son. And and also the king of Israel. And also one of the what? Why is this people? Um, he knew the law. He knew a lot of things. And the law was one of them. He just did, you know, he knew the law, broke it anyway. I don't give a damn. I'm doing this. That's evil. Let's, let's, get, let's get, uh, evil is knowing it is wrong, yet doing it anyway. Solomon was very wise, and he, be, 
became evil on so many levels. Let's get let's continue First King eleven and seven. Then did Solomon build up build up and hide place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Okay, get the understand of Chemosh. Re read that. Chemosh was the god of the Moabites. He is most notably att attested in the Meshach steel and the Hebrew Bible. The et et etymology of Chemosh is unknown. He is also known from Ebel Ebla as Kamish. Okay. Now, the mesh of steel is, is, is the Moabites carved writings on one of their uh, of stones that they found. Talking about, you know, the Israelites and, and uh, how they overcame us because when we sinned. King Solomon built temples for the gods of the Canaanites which are the Zidonians, the Ammonites, and the Moabites. Let's book, bookmark these three nations, for they will become relevant in a moment. <clears throat> Let's continue, First King 11 and 8. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Here it is. Solomon put these gods in the land for those strange women. We're going to even get further into these in another section. Come on. First Kings 11 and 9 And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel which had appeared unto him twice. Now, I went over this a couple of times. Y'all see how this is worded? First Kings 11 and 9 Read that again. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Okay, the Lord was mad with Solomon. Why? Because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. That's a different person he's talking about. Don't you notice that? Mm -hmm. The Lord, the, what, what Messiah was upset with him because he was mad because he wasn't doing his father's work. Uh, he wasn't keeping his father's commandments. Women have been, women have been many men's downfall, even our leaders. Solomon was also chasing these women in spite of what the Most High God told him. Now. The Most High God had told him about these sins that he was doing. The serving these of his gods had appeared before him twice, and he didn't listen. He ignored every the thing. He ignored the Most High God fully. Did what he wanted to do. Just went the hell off. All right, continue on. See, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. Excuse me for a second. I'm gonna tell you like this. This is first, you know, you look at you you look at how King Solomon's behavior was, him understanding the law. This was him, just him saying, "The hell with my kids. I'm gonna do what the hell I want to do." They go have to fend for themselves because he knew the law that the most I got punished the kids. He didn't give a damn about his children. He did what he wanted to do. When I'm out of here, they can do what the hell they want to do. That that was his attitude. You know, I know the Most High God thought he was, you know, great and 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 loved him and stuff. But Solomon was wicked as hell. He he, he got wicked, and like I said, the Most High the Most High God, he got wicked. The Most High God got mad at him because th that was his attitude. He he just said, "The hell with my kids," and his kids' kids. All of us have 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 because of his wickedness. All of us have been damned for a long time. I'm just let, I'm just telling the truth because the fact is, King Solomon's wickedness split up our kingdom. Nobody ain't, nobody ain't putting that out first because his wickedness, our kingdom was split. Okay. All right. Continue on. First Kings 11 and 10 And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods be kept not that which the Lord commanded. Just, no, the hell with the Most High. I'm not going to do what he asked me to do. I'm, he he don't came to me and told me not to do this stuff 
And I'm like ignoring him, man. You know what? These Moabite girls are really nice. I like them. I love these Zidonian women. I love these Ammonite women. I don't get that. You know, put God in, in, in Jerusalem so that they don't have to go way over there to their land and go to the temple and worship their God. They can worship it right here. All right, continue on First Kings eleven and eleven. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, now has not kept my covenant and my statute, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Now, and that ain't nothing that you're gonna be able to do about it. The Most High God told King Solomon, For all you you are doing, violating my covenant, my statutes and commandments. I would tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. The Most High took the kingdom from Rehoboam, Solomon's son, after Solomon had died, and gave ten tribes, including the Levite, to include the, the uh, parts of the Levites who were in the land of those of, of those tribes to Jeroboam. Now everybody talking about ten tribes, but they can't understand. You know, ten plus three is thirteen. So Levites was on both sides of the fence. It was those ten tribes plus the Levi, those nine tribes, the nine tribes plus Levi on, 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 the, on the northern kingdom. And it was also two tribes plus Levi on the southern kingdom side. So the Levites were on both sides of, of, of the, uh, on both sides. Solomon's servant. The Most High God didn't take it from Solomon, not because of his righteousness, but because of King David's righteousness. Let's get Exodus 20 and 5 to prove that. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So he visited the iniquities upon the, upon the who? Upon the third and fourth generation. Upon the who? The iniquity of the fathers born to who? The, the children. So, for a wicked father, who get punished? The children. That's who get punished. You doing it for the kids? You being wicked and violating the Most High God's uh, uh, commandments? Your children just gonna be just gonna be walking charcoal, dust. You just gonna be having children just to be having kids. When you, the parents, serve other gods, the most I got punishes the children to the great great grandchildren. So And you think you're being blessed? No. He punishes the children to the great great grandchildren. Because your bless your your being blessed has nothing to do with you. It has something to do with your forefathers before you that kept the commandments and, and pleased the most high God in a in a way that he put the blessings upon the children. It ain't it has nothing to do with your wicked behind. Now if your blessings continue and through your children, they're blessed too, it's because you're doing righteously in the eyes of the Most High God. But it ain't got nothing to do with you. You could be blessed because of your father did something righteous, was righteous in the sight of the Most High God. Now, when you have children and you being wicked, your kids gonna get it. your kids gonna get it. Well, that's where the curse is going to start at, on them. Okay, after the Most High took the kingdom of Israel out of King Solomon's hand, except Judah and Benjamin, Levi was among all the tribes. Let's get 1 Kings 12 and 25. And Jeroboam built Shechem to Mount Ephraim. Shechem. Shechem in Mount Ephraim. And dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Peniel. Similar to Jerusalem, Shechem was built in the mountains. Because it was built in Mount Ephraim. So it was a city in the mountains. 
Cause, because the fact is, we had walled cities that the the, the, the children of Israel, we, for, for, for some reason, we always built our cities in a safe environment, safe area, hard to attack. So if you want to come against us, you're going to have to spend some time. All right, let's continue on. First King 12 and 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the king return to the house of David. Jeroboam was trying to prevent the ten tribes from, retur from returning to Jerusalem according to the law. What what is he talking about, Jordan? Now the most high God had blessed him, gave him the gave him the the ten tribes. Now he wants he don't want them to turn back to Jerusalem. Why? Why is he why was this what was his concern? Alright, Dominic, read that. Next one. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Speak up. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Three times in a year shall be. Dominic, speak up. Three times in a year shall all thy veils appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. Okay. Now, okay, since you know that a little bit, why, now what, why was his concern? Part of the law. Since since you know that. Okay, read First uh, Kings twelve twenty six again. And Jeroboam said in his heart, "Now shall the king return to the house of David." Okay. What was his concern now? Dominic, read that again. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. What the place did he choose? Jeroboam. What the place did the Most High God choose? What was the city he chose? Um, Judah? No. Israel? What was the city? Dominic, what was the city? Chichu? What was the city did the Most High God choose? Jerusalem. Now, read that again. First Kings 12 and 26, Jordan. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the king return to the house of David. Okay. Now, why, did, uh, why, why was Jeroboam concerned? Because three times a year, the children of Israel had to go where? To the city of the Lord chose. What, what city was that? Jerusalem. What 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 city did uh, Jeroboam build? So that wasn't the cap. They still had to go to Jerusalem three times a year. So he was worried about that. He was concerned that if they went back to Jerusalem three times a year with their sacrifices and stuff, they might stay. Now finish reading Deuteronomy 16, 16, Dominic. Deuteronomy, yeah, read it. You didn't read it all. Read the whole thing. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which you shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of wheat. So they had to go for the, the feast of unleavened bread during the Passover. Come on. And the feast of weeks. Come on. And the feast of tabernacles. And the feast of tabernacles. Come on. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. They're going to go with gifts. Go bring in uh, uh, crops and, and, and first, of, first of corn and all that stuff. Jeroboam was trying to prevent the ten tribes from returning to Jerusalem to participate in these appointed holy days where all of the men were required to appear. Continue on. Continue on 1 Kings 12, 27. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of the, this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, 
and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah he felt if they go to sacrifice in Jerusalem that they would turn back to Rehoboam for some reason Jeroboam didn't make any sense at all if the Most High God had given him the rule why didn't Jeroboam inquire of the Most High concerning this matter why he didn't just go to one of the prophets and ask the prophets to inquire of the Most High of what he should do now, I don't really know what to do because the Most High you know you tell it told it uh, the children of Israel to go to Jerusalem what should I do now the prophet Ahijah spoke to Jeroboam regarding the taking of the kingdom out of uh, regarding the taking of the kingdom out of King Solomon's hand except two tribes why didn't Jeroboam go to Ahijah to inquire of the Most High God on his behalf so why he didn't go back to Ahijah, uh, the prophet Ahijah say hey man uh, you know we all got to appear in Jerusalem three times a year now that the Most High God gave me these ten tribes then, you know can you inquire the Most High God what, 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 what I should do because you know, I, I would would rather not that my, my people go to Jerusalem so that their heart might change back over to Rehoboam. What what should I do? Alright. Let's continue on. First Kings twelve twenty eight. Whereupon the king took counsel and they threw calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now see, that quick. He took counsel, but he didn't take counsel of the Most High God. He just went to some wicked Negroes, just like Rehoboam had done concerning when they went to Rehoboam and said, Could you take the yoke off our back, off, off of us, that King Solomon had put on us? Because it was too great. He took counsel of some wicked Negroes, some wicked Israelites, and they they built two golden calves. Worship these. Worship these calves. Yet Jeroboam took counsel out of those, but of those who were fas fascinated with the gods in Egypt. That's who he took counsel with. Yeah, let's build some. Let's build some calves calves of gold and they can say we can tell them that this is the God of Israel I ain't got to go to Jerusalem that quick that quick wickedness in two seconds flat he gave me kingdom and he got wickedness right away let's read Isaiah 31 and 2 Woe to the rebellious children. Woe, woe, woe to you, Jeroboam. Come on. Said the Lord, that take a counsel, but not of me. He took counsel, but he didn't take counsel of the Most High God. Come on. And I, and I cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add to sin, add sin to sin. Instead of Jeroboam taking counsel of the Most High, he went to some wicked Hebrews, and their counsel was two golden calves to worship. In every important decision in our lives, we should be taking counsel of the Most High God. His scriptures, not someone talking about the Most High God and Christ, but not using the Bible. But, hmm, you know, talking out the side of their neck. You know, continue on, Isaiah 30 and 2. That walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Somehow people don't, sometimes, somehow our people can't escape the things of their captivities. 
similar to being captive in America. Our people love oppression and the things that oppresses us. We love oppression. And this is a redundant theme throughout this Bible. All the things that causes us to be oppressed, we love that. All the things that keep us oppressed, we seem to fall in love with that. Because when we came out of Egypt, first thing we did in the wilderness, as soon as Moses walked away for 30, 40 days and 40 nights, we went back into Egypt. Got a golden calf that did not deliver us out of Egypt, but that's what we, uh, that's what we wanted. So we built a golden calf, one of, one of the Egyptian gods, and start bowing down and worshiping and having dances, dancing all around it and all kind of wickedness. Same thing here. Right, let's continue on 1 Kings 12, 29. And he sent the one in Bethel and put the one and the other put he and Dan. This, that simple commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, was totally violated. When the nation of Israel was relatively young, Judah, King Solomon, violated it over women. And Ephraim, Jeroboam, violated trying to maintain power and control over the people. Solomon didn't care and Jeroboam didn't believe. So they all had issues. Jeroboam didn't believe. The only thing he wanted to do was keep control over the people. Most like God gave him power, he had a taste of power, and he didn't care he didn't care what he had to do to keep it. Solomon, you know, he just got woman happy, women happy. Those those are the same things that 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 same features of black men and Hispanic men of today. And you like the thing, y'all like the thing, you can't deny who you are. We are descendants of King Solomon. We have the same addiction to women that King Solomon had. He got women happy. He didn't care about God no more. He just wanted women, 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 and do whatever the women wanted him to do, as long as he had women. Jeroboam wanted power. And to maintain that power. So, okay. Oh, yeah, build them gods and put them in Dan and put one over here. Yeah, let them go and worship that. I can see First King twelve and thirty. And this thing became a sin for the people who went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Jeroboam created sin, leading the people into idolatry every time they went before these calves and worship. Continue on. Continue on. First Kings twelve and thirty one, and he made an house of high places, made priests of the lowest of the people. Made the priests of the what? Of the lowest of the people, which were not the son of Levi. Now, yeah, like I'm saying, he did not care about the the Most High God's house. He didn't care about power. Now, I'm like I'm saying, the fact is, I'm reading, and I'm telling you what I'm reading, because. He know the Most High God set up Israel the way He set His house up. The Levites ministering to me, they are mine. That's what the Most High God said about the Levi. Yeah, boy, I'm like, no. Nah. So he didn't. He wasn't worshiping the Most High God, just like the so-called white man is today. Everything that he, the way he, the, the, the house of the Most High God is structured today has no God in it. Has no has, doesn't have our Elohim in it at all. Just, oh no, we're not doing that. That would that would that would the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob say do? We doing this. So Jeroboam the same way. He he just you no know, the Levites. Yeah, this would yeah yeah. I, I know what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said. No, we're not gonna use them. We're gonna use some of these low level low lives. They, yeah, bring them in. Most High God wasn't listening to that, so he he, he he him knowing that he didn't care about the Most High God. Jeroboam just went off. 
He rearranged the Most High God's house, making priests out of people who were not Levites. The Most High God was not accepting any of these sacrifices. Continue on. First King, twelve and thirty-two. Jeroboam, Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so that he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made, just like Esau. Jeroboam created holy days. It had the ten tribes celebrating wickedness, sacrificing flesh to the golden calves he had created. Let's get number two. Now see the fact is, this is this is how we had defiled the most high God house ourselves before the most high God brought in other nations and made us defile his house. Because we we voluntarily done it ourselves. So when he brought the other nations in over us, and they, they, their rule was a rule to say you can't be be yourself and can't worship me. He did that so that because we were already doing that to him already. Now we just voluntarily do it right now. We we do it to him right now. Even if you tell people that that's not the way it's supposed to be done, that's not the most like God's house. Now here's, here's, like I said, I'm going over just a few things the Most High God hate. He, he, like I said, I'm showing you right now the things that he hate. Don't do the things that he hate. And I'm showing you these examples in the Bible. He tell you don't do the, the bumble things that he hate. These things that I'm, I'm showing y'all are abominations to the Most High God. The Most High God hate when Israel marries outside of the nations. Outside of our nations. I'm going to continue with King Solomon and tie it in with another period of time. First Kings eleven and one. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Mm. You, you remember that King Solomon built temples for the gods of the Canaanites, which were the Zidonians, the Ammonites, and Moabites, because he was influenced by these women. Judah's weakness has always been women. That has been the so-called black man, black man weakness. Their weakness are these women here. Because of, of all the women in the world, the preferred women of, of the, the men of Judah, the so-called black men of Judah, are these women. They love they love the their their, their their the big booty African women. They love them them some Chinese women, Japanese women. That, that's what that's what they love. And they love them some Edomite women, the white women. Cause you, as soon as, he, as soon as these Negroes get get some money in their pocket, guess who they gonna go marry? Most of the time, as soon as these black men get money in their pocket, who they who they go in a marry? Answer the question. An Edomite. A what? An what is an Edomite? A white person. They they gonna marry somebody white? That you know, their their black women are not no longer good, uh, too, uh, good good enough for them. They gonna go marry them a white woman, you know. Then some of them, you know, who 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 been around for a little bit might, might marry a, a Japanese or a Chinese woman. They definitely ain't gonna marry no black woman, unless they already been married to her before they got rich. And I guarantee you, they gonna dump as soon as, soon as they get get money in their pocket. All right, come on, First King eleven and two of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, "You shall not go into them; neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods." So I may claim unto these in love. Now, the Most High God commanded us not to marry the other nations, and He tells us why. 
and, and he tells his wife more in more than one spot. He, most people, oh, hey, we were just talking about the people of, 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 of the Africans and stuff. No, the Most High God told us not to marry other nations, period. All right, read that law when he told us not to do that. Deuteronomy 72, Dominic, read. For the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Okay, so when the Most High God delivered these nations to us, this is what he told us. Smite them and utterly destroy them. Make no agreements with them. Nor show mercy unto them. That's when the Most High God gave us the land at first when we went into the land of Canaan. Alright, continue on. Here's his other instruction. Continue on. Deuteronomy 73. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall take unto thy son. Neither does. The, the Most High God want us to marry the other nations. The first thing you you so-called Negroes do when you feel that you've made it in society is go marry you a so-called white woman or an Asian woman. Continue on. Deuteronomy 74. For thy will turn away the son from following me, and they may wait. For they will turn away thy son from following me. They're gonna do what? Turn away thy son from following me. Mm-hmm. Come on. That they may serve unto other gods. So until the Lord of thy, till the anger of thy Lord be kindled against you, I utterly destroy thee suddenly. Now, it's done so subtly that most of y'all don't even even know. You know because they go worship their God and bring you gifts from their God. That that uh, what what that, that green uh, what that green. Stone is called a uh, called Asian love to wear. Uh, what's that that, that that green stone them Asian love to wear? Green, it's a green stone that the Asian women love to wear. Mm -hmm. Jade. 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 It's a jade. Mm -hmm. It's a green. It's a green stone that the Asian women love. They always have on. And you be offering you gifts from their God, and you don't even know it. Yeah, honey, this your nice gift. Put this on your arm. This will ward off evil. Hmm. Yeah, put this on your arm. It'll ward off evil. Oh, your horoscope today is it's dreadful. Stay at home. You know, the fact is, most like God say don't worship any God. Don't marry them because they're going to turn you away from following your God. There ain't nothing in, in the Bible talking about, you know, putting this stone or this rock on or having this, this waterway evil spirits and all this other stuff. Like we don't, you know, you know, the word of God wards away evil spirits. So most like God already told you they, they're gonna keep the, they're gonna have you serving other gods. This is why the most high God doesn't want us marrying the other nations. These women and these men and women will minimize your Elohim. Your beliefs are not important to them. But you are not keeping the commandments a detrimental to you. They will influence you to not keep the most high God's commandment, ordinances and statutes. That's what that's what they're gonna do. They're going to minimize your God. It ain't important. It ain't important to them. So they're going to make it, imp you know, they're going to make it not important to you too. You keep following them, that's what they're going to do. They're going to make it, oh man, it's not important. Oh man, I don't know why, why they're tripping. Why are you tripping? Why? Man, man, forget all that. All that religious mumbo jumbo. No, but you know, like your forefathers never went into slavery. All this bad stuff ain't never happened to you or your forefathers, but oh, forget all that. You don't understand that you know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's something to be feared. Something to tremble in, in, in his presence. 
Come on, continue on. Deuteronomy 7 and 5. But, that, but thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars. You do what? Destroy their altars. Not build them. You're supposed to build their altars. Did it say build their altars? No. Read that again. You shall destroy their altars. Okay, come on. And break down their images. And cut down their groves. And burn their given images with fire. Question. Why was Solomon building temples for Asherah, Milcom, and Shemosh when the Most High God instructed us to destroy them? What did the Most High God say that Solomon was doing what? Following after other gods. What, but he was doing what in his sight? Knowing something is wrong but doing it anyway. Oh, he's doing evil. He was doing evil. Solomon was being wicked as hell. He, he, he knew this. I'm sure he read it. One of the wisest men in the world knew this. Most like God told us to destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves. But here he is in Jerusalem building altars and stuff for, for all of these women. Now, you see how these go hand in hand? Don't worship other gods, but then you start dealing with their women. You worshiping other gods. And you being evil because all the things the most I God tell you not to do because of these women, you're doing it. Alright. First King eleven and three. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. His wives turned away his heart. I know many of you deal with the number with the sheer number of women King Solomon married. But this is not why the Most High was angry with so King Solomon. Was it sinful? First John 3 and 4. Read that, Dominic. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. The Most High only said, Obey those over us because this is our punishment for breaking his covenant. He gives us abundance when we keep his commandments. The Most High was angry with King Solomon for one, idolatry, 1 Kings 11 and 2, and number two, marrying strange wives, 1 Kings 11, uh, King 11 and 10. The Most High God blessed King Solomon in abundance. So was it, was it sinful for uh, King Solomon to marry all of these strange wives during this time? No. Because he had the abundance to take care of these women, but the fact is, he married strange wives. It was a sin for him to marry outside of the nation of Israel. And it was also a sin for him to be setting up temples and stuff of other gods in the land. Now, the Most High God did not come to Solomon because he married all these women. Now, all you people that, 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 that want to say something, Oh, King Solomon married all these women. He was, he was being, a, you know, a, a this and that. I, I don't see not one law in the Bible at this point that, that would say that the Most High God was wroth with Solomon for marrying all these, all these women. And the only reason why we can't have multiple wives now is because the Most High God said obey the municipality, the, the people that's over us. Because he put them over us and he want us to obey them. Since we didn't want to obey him. That's the only reason why right now. And and if you want to dispute that, so, cause, because the fact is, with the Most High God say, uh, 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 seven women going to cleave to one uh, 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 righteous uh, Israelite male when, when when Christ return, that means that He going to give us uh, abundance again, abundance again, and they're going to say we're going to uh, have our own raiment and our own cook our own food and, and our own clothes. So. I'm, I'm just saying that this this is not a, about uh, support of multiple wives versus not having multiple wives. I'm going over the law. What the Most High God was wroth with Solomon about? One, idolatry for putting up all of the, the, the statues and stuff and worshiping other gods, Asherah, Milcom, and Shemash, and two, marrying strange women outside of the nation of Israel. 
Some would agree that Deuteronomy 73 does not mean that the Israelites were allowed to marry the other nations. I've just given you one example with King Solomon. Below, it's another example. Let's get Nehemiah 13 and 23. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. Now, I saw I Jew. Now, who is Jews? Who are Jew? Um, now, this was this before or after the, the split? After. Okay. Now, who who are Jew? What is Jew? Judah. Okay, it is short for what? Judah. Judah. So this is the southern kingdom. He saw he saw some Jew the Jews of Judah. I saw a Jew. I saw Judah. Some uh, some Jews had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon and Moab. Who is Ashdod? Women we love, we, we all we always loved in As thou the Canaanites. Ammon. Who's Ammon? Japanese. And Moab. Chinese. So all the women that we love love to marry right now. Jew married women of Canaan, Ammon, and Moab. That's the so called black man. The Jews today line up. That's our line up today. Soon, soon the Negro get money in his pocket because none of these women are going to marry you with no money in your pocket. But as soon as you get money in your pocket, they, they love they love them some black man. And a, and a rich black man, oh, they, they squabble all over you. And I'm going to tell you, most of, these, most of these Asian women, you go over there, you're in the military, you go over there in their country, oh, they, you be, you be prime, prime suspect to get married. They, they be all over you trying to marry you. Because they trying to get over here anyway. Alright. Nehemiah 13, 24. Nehemiah 13, 24. And the children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and cannot speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. Okay. So, this is going to be a problem. We had, the, the men of Judah had to meet in Jerusalem, how many times a year? Three times. Three times a year. And you bring your family and these these suckers could not speak the language. The, the children couldn't speak the language. Why couldn't they speak the language? Because they were of uh, they were of Judah. Well, they that, that doesn't matter, but why they couldn't speak the language? Because because what? Their mothers like Yeah, the mother was raising them. They just they didn't know the, the language of the father because the father wasn't around them all the time. The mother was talking to them in their language all the time. So they could they were just sitting there like a a, a stump on a log. They didn't understand nothing you saying. What what did he saying? So this is this is the this is the uh Nehemiah was a, a, a priest but he was a, a wine bearer for Azexes, this is around 445 BCE. And Nehemiah came to the temple, came to, uh, to rebuild Jerusalem. I think this probably was his second trip, first or second trip. And he, when he came back, the kids couldn't even speak the language. And he observed this. And Nehemiah was a cupbearer for, for Azexes. And, and, and like I said, people don't understand what a cupbearer was. Dominic, will you please stop? They don't understand what a cupbearer was. You know, when you were a cupbearer, you 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 were a defender of the king. Every everything at his table, you know, when you, when he have uh, guests and stuff, everything at, at the table, the cupbearer had to taste all of all of the, the, the king's uh, uh, wine and everything. And if somebody was doing something detrimental to uh, to harm the king, the cupbearer gonna be the one to defend him. You had to be a bad boy. You uh, you he was gonna give it to. Him. Just some weak, weak chump. You gonna, you gonna be somebody that's gonna be protecting the king at all costs. And he had, to, you had to be trustworthy, where the king trusts you fully. So, 
Nehemiah was that person was the, the, the head Negro in charge at, at, at the king environment anything the king had with, 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 that dealt with guests or anything he was going to be there present tasting the, the, the king's wine make certain that the king's wine was not po a poison and if somebody got, got up and, and wanted to try to attack the king Nehemiah was going to put him to bed so the things that he did when he was here everybody knew who he was because he got paid pretty good. That was a good, high paying position. Everybody knew who Nehemiah was and, and how bad he was to, for him to do the things that we're going to read about now. All right, continue reading. Nehemiah 13 and 25. And I contended with them and cursed them. I cursed the hell out of them now. I contended with them. When, when, he, when he found out that these, these uh, children couldn't speak the language, he contended with the men. And I cursed at him. And did what else? It's most certain of them. I slapped the hell out of a few, a few of them. Because they got they got uppity with me and started talking crap. I just put my hand upside their head. I ain't playing with you. Now, and like, I'm, I'm going to tell you because Nehemiah was, such, uh, was, was deadly. Nobody didn't want to challenge him. Come on. And I smoked certain of them and did what? And plucked off their I, hair. I pulled their hair off their face. Now they got a full beard and I just yanked their hair off their face. And none of them did nothing because they were scared as hell. What else? You made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Nehemiah was no joke. You know, he was, he was a Levite, he was no joke. For you to do that to a grown man and he don't do nothing to you? They, he was, they were scared as hell of Nehemiah. Because, he, like I said, the things that he did, didn't, he cursed them and, and smote, slapped the hell out of a few of them. You know, what, what you just say? What? He went over there and dealt with them. Pulled hair off their head, off their face, off their beard. That, that hurt like hell. Somebody just grab your beard and just yank it. Oh man, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have some blood and everything outside your head. Nehemiah was no joke for marrying these strange women. Nehemiah laid hands on some of them, cursed, cursed them, pulled out their beards, and made them swear that their children were not allowed to marry inside of Israel. Get to y'all. Nehemiah 13 and 26. Now wait a minute before you start there. Now, this proves without a shadow of a doubt that you, we're not supposed to marry outside of the nation. And Nehemiah is going to rehash that. He don't, he, like I said, he was serious about us keeping our bloodline pure during that time. Because we were going off. We had went off, period. Come on. Nehemiah 13 and 26 Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him Who was beloved of his God And God made him king over all Israel Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause the sin He didn't want us, he didn't want us married And he understood the, the reason why we, we was not supposed to marry outside our nation Because these women would have you doing all kinds of stuff Against God, you know, and they go. And, and the first thing, the first thing these Negroes say, "Oh, they're a religious mumbo jumbo." Man, get the hell out of my face with that! You can keep that opinion to your damn self with your stupid ass. That's how I feel about most of these these Negroes talking about, "Oh, they're religious mumbo jumbo." You know, I want God to be an example in your life and slap you right upside your head while while you saying that. Because you know, I, I, you know, the fact is, when you get to the point when you understand this Bible and understand the, the detriment of, of of your nation for doing for going against your God, this is not for everybody. Now, it would be a religious mumbo jumbo if it was a, a nation outside of Israel doing this. Because the fact is, they can see and most High God didn't give these laws to them. He didn't give the laws to them. Now they're going to be doing them once we, we get control of the kingdom again, but the fact is, 
Most like God didn't give them these laws. I continue on Nehemiah thirteen twenty seven. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our gods, and marry strange wives? And the race of marriage is a sin against our Elohim. Number three, the, the things that the, the don't do the abundant things the most high God hates. He, now those two he hates. Idolatry, interracial marriage. The most high God hates when we follow after the other nations, especially Esau. Hebrews twelve and sixteen. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Esau is a fornicator. Throughout their history, they are known to do all the fornications that the Most High God warned Israel against. They are very profane. They came against Israel, preventing them from worshiping their God. So, profaning our Elohim, that's what they did. Excerpt from Philo. This is, this is a Hellenized Israelite back in during the time of Christ Philo died around 50 AD he was a Hellenized uh, he went through uh, you know he was living in, in some of the Hellenized Greek provinces since during this time okay this, I'm going to give you and show you an example of the things that Esau was doing did now see the fact is Esau came up on the, 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 the uh, came up in, in Africa during that time in in uh, Around 335 BCE, when Alexander the Great came and conquered all the black nations, black black nations of, of of that land, he was not anywhere. His kingdom was not anywhere in that land prior to that. Now, during that time, during this time, during the time of Christ, still these Greeks were doing this to to people of this land, especially the Jews. Let's let's read what what they were doing. Philo. Excerpt from Philo. Philo further ex exclaimed in response that the mobs drove the Jews entirely out of four quarters and crammed them all into a very small portion of one, while the populace overrunning their desolate houses turned to plunder and divided the booty among themselves as if they had obtained it in war. Now, stop right there. Now, these Edomites, so-called white men, ran the Jews out of four areas that, where they were living stole all of their stuff like they had done it in war just like they did in Black Wall Street now I'm just showing you that this was not the isolated Black Wall Street was not an isolated incident in history this white man has been doing this for forever they burned the people houses down stole all their stuff and here it is right here showing, Philo is writing about it where they did this back then ran the people out of three quarters of uh, you know of three quarters in, in, in that city and they 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 uh jammed them up into one quarter and they stole all their stuff as if they were dead they had obtained it in war come on come on really he added he added their enemies, slew them, and thousands of others with all kinds of agony and torture, and newly invented cruelty. They just killed them for, for no reason. Or right, continue on. For wherever they met with or caught sight of a Jew, they stoned him or beat him with sticks. Okay. Don't have they doing that now? You go to some of these little small cities, they catch you walking at night, them, them white folk gonna kill you. This, this is nothing new. And, and, and y'all think that, oh, y'all just hating. No, I'm showing you history where this has occurred. It, this is no isolated incident where white folks just found a black man somewhere walking walking at, at night or found a, a black woman walking, rape her and kill her. They do this. I mean, would you please stop that at the table? Okay. So read that again. Start at wherever. Wherever they met with or caught sight of a Jew, they stoned him or beat him with sticks. 
Further, he exclaimed, the most merciless of all their persecutors in some instances burnt whole families, husbands with their wives and infant children with their parents in the middle of the city, sparing neither age nor youth, nor the innocent helplessness of infants. Bible, now, now, see, this is, this is Bible prophecy. You know, they ain't going to show mercy to the young or to the old. Let's 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 get that let's get that precept. See, because this is history. Let's get Deuteronomy twenty-eight. I think it's fifty. I think it's fifty. Yeah. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. This is this is what the Most High God put in His curses. This nation ain't gonna show favor to you. They gonna kill women, children, babies. They they burnt everybody. They don't like if it. They are born. These people are born to hate you. So. When, when these when these kind of things uh, that that happen, uh, you find things that that they do to, to, to people. When they happen, you know, I was listening to. I don't know if y'all heard this. Listen to the news the other day. This white man followed this black kid in the store because he was listening to rap music loud. He killed. He, he went in there and uh, cut his throat. And when the police asked him why he killed the young dude, young black man, because he was listening to rap music. So he feared for his life. Now they just let this black, this white man out for being violent. And this kid was just sitting in, in his car listening to music. And, and he got out of the car and went into the store. The white man walked in behind him and, and, and killed him. Because he was sitting in the car listening to, to music. I'm going to tell y'all. You know, I, I fear for my kids every day because, you know what, they are gullible, they think everybody loves them. And, you know, I, I'm sitting up there, devils are everywhere. And this boy was just only 21, was he? Tw no, he was 21, yeah. Just started living his life. Just, just got off of a second shift, working two jobs. Good kid, as, the, as they tell him. But the fact is, most High God say he do what to punish the, for the iniquity of the father. What, what do he do? Huh? He take it apart with children. So his father wicked as hell. Now you just blame that on the father, and like I'm saying, you know, the most High God punishes the kids for being for be, for the father being wicked. But. And I'm not, I'm not wishing anything upon this this father who, who lost his son because it, it it would hurt my heart for me to lose one of my kids. But the fact is, y'all just got to understand that for your for your wickedness, the Most High God write in His Word that He will punish, He will, He will visit the, the iniquity of the father upon the children. So if you think you love your kids, you need to straighten your ass up and and and, and fly right. Because most like God ain't gonna leave. He, he he's not gonna ignore you. Oh, oh, that's just him. Uh, I'll I'll watch over his kids. No, he's not. You know, because the fact is, once you know this stuff, you need to be like, oh yeah, I can't do that no more. And you say you love your kids. My kids probably think I hate them. But the reason why I do the things that I do is because the fact is, I don't want nothing to happen to them because of me. I don't want them to walk on, upon this earth being afraid because of the things I did wickedly. Now, let's finish where we are now. Let's, let's, let's start at caught, caught sight. Follow Jordan. Caught sight of a Jew. Mm. Caught sight of a Jew, they stoned him or beat him with sticks. Further, he exclaimed, the most merciless of their parents in the middle of the city. Of oh, their what? Of their parents. Persecutors. 
The most merciless of their persecutors, in some instances, burnt whole families, husbands with their wives and infant children, with their parents in the middle of the city, sparing neither age nor youth, nor the innocent helplessness of infants. Philo also explains that some men were brutally treated and dragged rigorously until they died, while those who did these things mimicked the sufferers, like people employed in the representation of theatrical forces. Other Jews were tortured to death. Eventually, Flaccus was expelled from the office as well as from the place. Ultimately, he was given the punishment of death. Now, this this uh, could be found. It, it is a uh, uh, I found it on a Google. Let me let me see where I, let me see where I found it because I found it on Google. So this could be found. Let me, Okay. Now they got Philo.com. I ain't trying to do no Philo.com. You can, you can, it's in Wik on Wikipedia, Philo the Jew. So Philo the Jew is in Wikipedia. You can get some information on Philo the Jew on Wikipedia. But he was a uh, he was a Hellenized Jew. He was living in the Hellenized provinces, so you know he he didn't really know much. Of, you know he he knew knew uh, of, of God the same way the white man taught all of y'all about God. He was Hellenized. Let's get Lamentations 5 and 1. Jordan. Oh, Remember. Please. Put that phone back up, please. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Remember you, your people and all these evil things that are happening to us. Because we are, we are, we are, uh, the most I like God put us in this situation. And this this is Jeremiah understanding that these are the things that the most high God done to us when he when he covered us in the cloud and now all all of the things that we're you know that, that are happening to us. The other nations have brought come upon us now so he's and remember us most high remember what you did to us when you walked away. Come on. Limitations 5 and 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our house is to aliens. Our land, language, nationality, culture, knowledge of the Most High has been taken from us and currently belong to strangers. We are now the illegal aliens. L the land we dwell even to this day, other nations find natural resources, kick us off our land. They have been doing this for over a thousand years using terms like regentification to date. Continue on. Limitations 5 and 3. You are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. They have slaughtered our fathers. Anytime a righteous man speak against this oppression, someone is sent to silence him. The children of orphans and the mothers are widows. Continue. Limitations 5 and 4. We have drunk in our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. We have a water bill when water freely falls from the sky. We have to pay for the wood on the land that the Most High God gave us. It's funny. So-called blacks and Hispanics treat housing projects like it doesn't belong to them. And it doesn't. 
However, the so-called white man treats the entire earth like it doesn't belong to them. And it doesn't. Because they clear-cut lands like it ain't no, nobody's business. They treat, treat the sea, filth, just pollute everywhere they go. Just throw trash everywhere. You know, and then they want to call us, you know, the people that's polluting the land. We don't go, we, we don't have own ships. We don't, we don't dump stuff in, 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 in woods and go out in the woods because we don't want to pay for this, because your company is, 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 uh, polluting the earth. Don't, uh, don't hire, uh, people to take dump trump of, 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 of stuff that you, that you're supposed to get rid of the right way and have them go out in the woods and, and dump that in, 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 in the woods. This white, this so-called white man does it. He treats the earth like it doesn't belong him to him, and it doesn't belong to him. Uh, all right, come on. Limitations five and five. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and we and have no rest because of, you know because of the the abominable things that we we do or have done. These are the things that happen happens to us all the time. Y'all need to understand because of because of all the abominable things that we do, the most high God has has brought this upon us. To this so called to this so called white man, we are guilty of, of a crime when we are walking home from work. Sitting on a train, tired after a hard day's work, and we are harassed for falling asleep on the train, ride home. Many work two and three jobs to make ends meet. My philosophy has always been, if one job can't do it, then I'm not putting myself in a situation where I need two. I, you know, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I need two jobs. If I can't make it happen with that one job, like spend less, save more, you know, you, the fact is, you change your philosophy. Not, not increase all your job, your work time, you know, you turn into a damn slave. Change your philosophy. Stop needing. Stop needing every damn thing. If you if you need all all this stuff to live, you you, you just you just buying into all of this junk. You don't need all this stuff. Spend less, save more. So if you're trying to do something, you spend less and you save more of your money. Oh, I gotta have that. Them five hundred dollar tennis shoes. Now you gotta go get two jobs. No. Continue on. Let me taste the five and seven. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. This is the most of God's plan. He visits the sins of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation, according to Exodus twenty and five. So in Lamentation five and seven. He just they're just rehashing Exodus twenty and five. Our fathers have sinned and they're gone. And we have borne their iniquities. Yeah. Like the most like God said you're gonna do. Then because your father dead, oh the most like God uh, no the, the, the sin's gonna be visited upon the children. Lamentations five and eight. Servants have ruled over us. What? Servants have ruled over us. Okay. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hands. Now, the most like God called them servants. I didn't call them servants. These people that are ruling over us now are what? When we came out of Egypt, Esau and all the other nations were our servants. Because of our sins, they now rule over us. Imagine that. Most like God say servants rule over us. They these people that walking around that that that's ruling over you now, and they got the best lands and and and, and, and living deliciously. They are your servants. They were your servants, and they were created to serve you, because in all actuality, you are the gods upon the earth. You just don't want to be the gods. You want to be the servant. And like I said, me, I'm trying to wake you up to your God's state, but a lot of y'all want to be servants and stay asleep. Love being a servant. You know, I, I, you know, I try to, you know, every time I go, 
every day I look at these expensive yachts on YouTube and when, when my sons walk in the kitchen and I show it to them I say you know what that's delicious living when the, when the, when the, when the most high God say in Revelations 18 and 6 that they are living deliciously y'all don't understand what delicious living is when you got a uh, when you got a 90 meter a yacht and it costs you a hundred and some thousand, maybe two hundred thousand dollars to fill that yacht up every time you put it on the in cruise, and it ain't no thing to you. You got servants, you got people that live on this on that boat, servicing it every day, cleaning the spick and span. And and when you come on it, it's clean. It you can you you know the the owner can fly in unexpected, and that yacht gonna be spick and span because the crew that he hired is gonna have that yacht clean all the time. I think y'all don't understand what living deliciously is. You know, you got a few dollars in your pocket, but when when you when you got a a, a three a, a hundred you know a hundred meter of what is, it was got ninety meter yacht, it's like a hundred and eighty, almost two hundred foot yacht, two hundred foot two hundred foot boat that can house another small ship. Because you know this yacht's so big, it can't get close to land. So they have they have other boats inside of the yacht. So when they get close, they can drive to to to, to land. Maybe some of them have cars on the inside of them. So when they get to to a, a port where they can dock, they can pull their car off, drive down the street. Now, have a helicopter pad where a helicopter can actually land and sit. No biggie. And this yacht can go about 30 knots an hour per hour. So they got a big old, two big, big engines on there. Because, you know, you got to have some really huge to push that kind of weight all around, all around the earth. Y'all understand what living delicious is. That's why I look at it most of the time. Because, you know what? Yeah, I get jealous of, I get jealous of the most high God of allowing them, the people that's not his, to live like that. I'm, I'm jealous of that. Y'all don't understand what jealousy is. I am jealous of, of that because most like God showed me my jealousy. Because he, when he told you that his name is Jealous, he's serious about that. He was serious about it. I'm, my name is Jealous. And y'all want to call him all these other names. Oh, his name is Yahweh Shah. No, no, most like God said, my name is Jealous. Y'all need, uh, need to pay attention to that, that, that name. Y'all want to do Yahweh, you know, Ahia and all this other stuff. Most like God, he just said, you know, when he told Moses, tell him I am that I am. No, man, just tell him I am that I am. But when he said my name is Jealous, it's serious. All right. Let's get Lamentations 5 and 9. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Because Esau hates the children of Israel, our lives are in danger even when we go to and from work. Esau has always been covetous, which is the worst sin. Coveting land, Esau killed, stole, enslaved, etc. Why do you think I say uh, covetous is, uh, is, is the worst sin? Think about it. Because you covet something too much, you want to. It, it creates what? More sin. Okay, like, give me an example. Adultery. Okay, well, give me a sin. Give me a, give me an example with that. Like if you covet somebody's wife, you. That's the thing you got. That's one sin is coveting. You desire their wife, and then you're gonna act upon it, and you then you're gonna do the, the, do the action. Because when Esau covered your land, oh, this is a nice land over there. I sure want that. So he gonna put it in action to disappear you, kill you, take your land, or steal your land. Steal you and your land. Oh, I'm going to put his ass in slavery and I'm going to take his land. 
covetousness is, 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 is the worst sin. Because covetousness, to covet, you do all the rest of the sins. Steal, kill, lie. And so the, so the thing about it is, coveting, when you start coveting, that's, that's a sin that, that, that creates, open the door to the other sins. That's why I say it's the worst one. Because uh, uh, you know, for a thief to steal, what 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 is the the the, the rule for a thief to want to steal something? Has to kill it after it. He got it. He got it covered. It. He got to want to have it. it. Becomes idolatry because if you want it so bad, you got to go steal it. You you uh, you are in the midst of idolatry. You put that upon the podium before the Most High. This is this is Esau's nature. He's always been covetous, because if he if he didn't, he wouldn't be sitting in everybody's land, or killed everybody and taking their land. Which is it's, it's the worst sin. Coveted, coveting land, Esau killed, stole, enslaved, etc. He killed people. He stole. He stole the people, and he enslaved them. You name it, Esau did it to to take their land. This is his behavior. The hatred that Esau has for the so-called black man is documented throughout history. They have always came into lands claiming it as their own. Before 335 BCE there were no large populations of Edomites on the continent of Africa. In America before 1492 there were no so-called white people in this land. None. There was no white folks in this land before 1492. On the side of the, of, of the earth. No white people on the side of the earth. And now they're in, this, they're in this land telling everybody to go back to Africa. Guess what? The majority of us are not we're not living in Africa before he showed up. They just reclassified a lot of us, calling us African Americans. When the majority of us that, that were enslaved were already here. That's a little secret that they ain't telling everybody. Because... The fact is, the numbers that support the number of people that are black over here right now. Let me say that again. The number of people that were brought over here from West Coast of Africa does not support the large masses of numbers that are here now. Of black folks that, were, that are here now. We were already here. Because they only brought like three, I think three and a half million people on this side of the world. To, to, to hear guess what the, the the biggest the largest number of people they brought guess where they brought them to sent them to Brazil they didn't bring that they didn't, they didn't bring as many people here as they did in Brazil Brazil has three or four times more black folks from 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 West Coast of Africa from from uh, there in Brazil. Now, now I hear that chant that these white folks talk about. Go back to Africa? No, no. Well, y'all need to go back from wherever the hell y'all came from before 1492. Like I said, in America before 1492, there were no so-called white people in this land. Why are they telling so-called blacks to go back to Africa when the majority of them were already here and have been relabeled as so-called African American? That's all they did to us, relabel us. Because during the Dawes Roll, during the Dawes Roll back in late 1898, 1898, none of the black so-called uh, Native Americans were not allowed to sign their name on the Dawes Roll. But white folks who paid five, the, the commissioners five dollars were allowed to sign their name on this roll and now they're walking around talking about their Native American five dollar Indians that's what they call them that's why that name comes five dollar Indian most of these people are white folks that that they paid the commission on those dolls roll five dollars to get their name on there and now their great grandkids are benefiting from it now calling themselves Native American and they don't have a drop of Indian blood in them but the blacks were put in the Negro section when the Native Americans that came and, 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 to, to sign their Dawes Roll and they were blacks like me 
they made them they put them in in the Native American uh, the the, uh, the 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 African American category. So that's why a lot of black people who are who are Indians of this land, Native American up to this land, are not are being called African American today. You know, that's why. Like I'm, like I'm telling you, this white man steals every damn thing. He stole everything. If, if there's something important worth stealing, he don't stole it. Your heritage is worth stealing. He don't stole it, and he got it. All of all of Israel's heritage has been stolen by this so-called white man. All of it. The Jews' heritage, the so-called black people, Judah, their heritage stolen. Native American, their heritage is stolen too. We were not, we were not Africans by their forefathers, even when they stole us from Africa. The posters when they sold us said Hebos, H-E-E-B-O-E-S, or Hebos for sale, or Negroes for sale. Never is said African American Africans. It never said Africans. So why all of a sudden they want to associate us with being Africans? Now, that that's that's the that's the foolery of it all because their forefathers, when they sold us, when they took us off that boat, they never called us Africans. Never. They never said Africans for sale. And never at one point in, 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 in slavery they never call us Africans. But now all of a sudden, they want to call us Africans. Let's get Micah 2 and 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity, work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hands. There is a destruction coming to those who create evil plans against the Israelites, like them defiling Hip hop creating the preschool to prison pipeline, regentification projects, stealing of the land and natural resources. Esau thought about these plans in their beds, woke up and executed them. Because the fact is, they didn't like hip hop at first. It became popular. All of a sudden, they bought into it, came in, pushed in a lot of money. Next thing you know, they start investing in these prisons and stuff. And they start investing in gangster rap. No, you can't rap like that no more. No more positive stuff. No more no more fun rap. No more DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. No more no more heavy D and the boys. No more poor righteous teachers. No more that rap. We don't we don't want to hear that kind of stuff. That positive rap and that fun rap. That fun hip hop. We want to, you know, no, no more. Uh, who, who, who was it? Uh, it's like the jungle sometime. Uh, who, who, who was that? But no more of, of of those elevating the mind type raps and stuff. All of a sudden, it was the NWAs and Ghetto Boys and all of that stuff. You know, talk about. Calling women hoes and bees and all this other stuff. That's the stuff the white man support. So he changed the minds of all these people, want these want these young men and young women to act this way, so prison on the back end to catch all that. Cause once y'all start acting that way, prison gonna catch you. And most of these young boys, that's what prison has done. Because they wanna be gangsters and dope boys and all this other stuff. Due to all of the the hip hop and the, the the change of hip hop, the hip hop wasn't like that when I grew up when I was listening to it. But once once it started, everything every every song everything is always about women, clothes, drugs, and and stuff like that, and and, and talking about how much money you got. Y'all can have that. I don't even want to really listen to radio no more. Alright, continue, Micah 2 and 2. 
And they covet fields and take them by violence. They do what? And they covet fields and take them by violence. Like I said, covet is a is 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 the worst sin to be. Because when you covet something, you take it by violence. That means you sin it again. All right, come on. And houses take them away. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. They oppress us in our house and our heritage. Esau covets land and take them by violence. This is exactly how Esau's father Isaac told him he would gain the, the best part of the earth. Let me read that. Genesis 27. Speak up. Genesis 27 and 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father, bless me. Even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. After Jacob had taken the blessings, Esau pleaded with his father Isaac to bless him. Bless me, father, even me one of the blessings. Come on. Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and the dew of heaven from above. Isaac told Esau that he would have the best part of the earth with rain to support livestock and crops. You're going to have the dew from the heaven. So all your land that you're going to be in is going to be nice, green, pastured land. Come on. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Wait a Genesis 27 and 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And thou shalt serve thy brother. And shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. That thou shalt break his yoke from, thy, from off thy bed. He saw you would covet fields and take them by killing. Because Jacob told Isaac told him that, yeah, you're going to have the best part of the earth, but you're going to take it by violence. You're going to kill to get it. You're going you're gonna, to buy the sword. So what does the sword mean? Does the sword just mean a, a sword? In the Bible, the sword is just an instrument of death. So the sword, could, could the sword be a gun? Yes. It's by the instrument of death. You gonna by the sword. You gonna take the land. You gonna kill to get it. So Psalms forty nine and eleven. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own name. Hmm. Like. Like Alexandria, some parts around Egypt, when uh, uh, after the king of Alexandria, you know, they 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 start messing up all these names, you know, even uh, what, what was it? Uh, uh, what was it? You know, Antiochus even has uh, had a name, uh, had, had some land named after him. You know, every time uh, you know, you got you got Houston named after somebody. You got, yeah, all all of these names are named after a man here. Dallas, you know, Houston. Uh, uh, what's this school down there? Going toward, uh, going south, I forgot the name of it. Sam Houston. You know. The Bible is typically talked about Esau. You just have to know where to look <coughs> all, all, of, all of these see, because the fact is this is this because the most high God doesn't change so this not only talking about Esau it's talking about Babylonian captivity they all had the same MO this is how our enemies treat us when they get the hand over us because all the nations hate us they not going to show favor to. They not going to show favor to the young. You know, like I can say the fact. But the fact is, because this is Esau's kingdom now, I can show you in the history how Esau has treated us over the years. You know, they don't teach our kids about Black Wall Street because Philo was telling you about Black Wall Street back then, 40, 30, 40 A.D. You know, he was telling you about Black Wall Street then, the, the, the hell that we were catching, and you know, they would come in. And just run you off your out of your houses and stuff, and and take all your stuff. 
and they act like they that that it was a war, and they stole your stole your stuff, and, and, and you know they took it like uh, the booty from a war. No, they just came in and just took you, you know, took your stuff, ran you off, killed you, and took your stuff. This is this is the same mo this white man does today. And y'all wanna y'all wanna sit and love you you know like I say you just need to just chill out because you know they act like a, they act like a mob so you know what when they start all get together and start having the, the same doggone uh, wicked wicked thought they can turn on you in a any minute. Lamentation four seventeen. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help in our watching. We have watched for a nation that cannot save us. The present day Israelites are looking for help that is not coming from a nation the same as our enemies protesting and politicking has not solved anything for us except helped us lose more ground in our communities. Why did I say that? I'm going to take it from a 60 standpoint to a standpoint today. Protesting and politicking, like I said, has not solved anything for us except helped us lose more ground in our communities. Think about it in the 60s to now. What were we fighting for in the 60s? The Equal rights. Equal rights. Civil rights, whatever the civil rights bill, equal rights, and all that stuff. And, and what has that grossed us? Nothing. What has it grossed us? What have, what is the net effect of civil rights, equal right bill? Right now, it's just it's a little gays can get married. The black man was the spearhead of that, uh, you know, of all of this stuff. But of all of the people, all the genders of 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 of, of the civil rights bill, who get the most? Who, who get the most rights? They come out of the civil rights bill. This stuff y'all need to know. Number one, white women. Number two, gay people. Where's the black man at in that? Now we're the ones, black Panthers got killed, lost their lives. Martin Luther King lost his life. Malcolm X lost his life. We're the ones getting all, get, get, getting killed for, for, for the right to be free. But where's our freedom at? We are still getting killed in the streets for no reason at all. White man got his, got the right to come and put his hands on you for no reason at all. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm wishing the right, right group of black men turn that, turn that tail when some white man come and put his hands on him because he want his idea or some and take, take his gun and, 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 and show him what a good pistol whipping is. Because you know what, you know they don't do that to white folks. They don't just come in the white folk community and tell them, "I need to see your ID." What you need to see my ID for? They don't do that to white people. Where is our rights at? Y'all and y'all y'all not upset about that? You ain't got no damn rights. So that's why I tell y'all to shut the hell up. You ain't got no right when this white man come to you. This is his land. The most I got gave it to him because you being wicked. And when when, when the time comes when he when he comes upon you like that, remember your wickedness. Remember how wicked you are. Remember that you don't want to do nothing. The most I got tell you, shut the hell up, and pray to the most I that he don't kill you that that day. You don't have no rights here. Does it save y'all? It, it, it might not because most I got it. If he's sending that white man to kill you, you dead. Y'all remember, y'all, like I said, the fact is when you wicked, you cannot 
sit there and think that you have rights when the Most High God gave you these laws, statutes, and commandments and you refuse to do them. Y'all have no rights. I want y'all to understand that. No, no, but I'm just telling you, we have benefited nothing from that. Black men don't benefit from none, none, of, none of the civil rights. Only thing they did, they they got they got mad with us and made them even more harder. The prison pipeline, they got mostly black men in the prison and Hispanic men. Where your rights at? You ain't no damn rights. You know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and all these other people, they lost their lives for nothing. Because the net effect is a negative one. We were soft. At, at one time, we had out, we had at least some grocery stores in our community where we didn't have to go to the white man to, to, to get harassed by him. We could have stayed in our communities. You know, the grocery stores wasn't that big, but you could have at least survived and ate and, and be fed, feed your family. You know, you have people coming selling you fresh fruit. You know, watermelon trucks up and down the street selling you watermelons, selling you fresh fruit. All right, Lamentations 4 and 18. And cut our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. For our end is come. This is what the Civil Rights Bill did to us. Now, this white man is in our community all the time, hunting our step. We can't even go out in our streets. If you look suspect, you walking around with your pants down below your butt with, with, with some rap music on. Mind your own damn business. Sitting watching, waiting on your friend at the gas station with your, with your radio on, and, and some white guy run up, come up behind you and kill you for no reason at all. Because he didn't like the music you was playing. Asking an officer of the law, is there a reason why you, you're stopping me? Should not result in a brutal beat, a brutal beat down and an arrest. That happens to us all the time. You can say, sir, is there a reason why you're stopping me? And you get your ass whooped and you go to jail. Walking while black, riding a bike while black, or driving while black are all criminal offenses in America. You as well have no rights unless the, they all they allow they allow you to have rights. Or unless they say you do. So y'all quit thinking y'all have rights. The Bible tell you they hunt your steps. All right, wait a minute. Yeah. Continue on. Lamentations 4.19. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. Oh, they are swifter than what? Swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Okay. Well, I would love somebody to explain this. I've had not one Israelite explain this one correctly. The persecutors today, what is their national symbol? What is America's national symbol? Eagle. They they are swifter than the eagles. So these 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 persecutors we're talking about Esau. Most of God don't want to act like them, but since y'all want to act like them, they're gonna persecute you swifter than the eagle. And the eagle is the national is is, is America's national symbol. They Pursue the Israelites in their governments. That's the mountains. They they pursue you know what he it says that they pursue us upon the mountains. So they pursue us in their governments. Always creating laws against us. They lay wait for us in the concrete jungle, which is the wilderness, hunting our step. Yeah, we're in the concrete jungle, which is the wilderness. Because they go lay traps for us right there in our community. In in the, in this jungle, in this concrete jungle. They lay steps, they they hunt our steps right there. 
and persecute us in, our, in, in their governments. You know, for uh, for the same crime you smoking weed, you get five years, and the so-called white man get probation. Community service. Lamentations four and twenty. The breadth of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken there in their pits, of whom he said, Under his shadow we shall live among the heaven the heathen. They took us into captivity, placed us in the bowels of their ship ships and in their jails, and we have been living and serving them. Continue on. Lamentations four and twenty one. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Okay, who? O daughter of Edom. Mm. Now see, the Most High God just told you who was doing all this stuff to us. During this time, during this time, when Lamentations was written, Edomite was the Edom, Edomites were not in control. This is around six, six, six around Jeremiah time, six eighty seven, six eighty seven BCE. Edomites were not in charge right there at this time. That was three hundred and thirty-five years earlier than when they were in control. Now they were round about helping all of these, you know, Babylonians and stuff, but they were not in charge. But what 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 did he say? Levitation four twenty-one again. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwells in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through thee unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Now, all the things that are happening to us, the most I God say, Oh, the cup is going to be yours in a little bit. Just be glad now. Rejoice in what you're doing now. But this cup that, that's in the, in the hands of, of my children, I'm going to put it in, the, in, in your hand, and it's going to be your turn to be pursued. The Most High God is now revealing who he is referring Edom. He represents the nation that loves his raw meat. The cup of, the cup of captivity and death that the Israelites presently hold, Edom is next. Continue. Lamentations 4.22 The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Okay, so the daughter of Zion, this, this is the Jews, our, our punishment... It's going to be accomplished, and what's going to happen? He will no more carry thee away un into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Okay. Then he's going to turn to the Edomites. The Jews' punishment is our, for our sins are nearing an end. This is the thing that y'all need to understand. Our punishment is coming to an end. The Most High would never put us into slavery again. This is why it is important for you Israelites to stop acting like Esau. Because he's going to put that, that cup that we have been having in our hands for all of these millennia into their hands. Number four. What we must do to stand a chance to get the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? For what communion hath light with darkness? Mm. First thing that we must do so we can get a chance on the road back to the Most High, you can't stay yoked up with people who remain in this world. If you are serious about the Most High and doing His will, you will realize that you can't continue to hang out with those doing worldly things. If you are not if you are not Hiding this truth, that most of your friends will no longer come around. If you're not hiding the truth, and they 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 find you, you uh, that you really are into this word, your friends ain't gonna hang out with you no more. Because you're gonna stop doing the worldly things that they're doing. You're not gonna be into all that all of that worldly junk that they're into. You can't be unequally. Yo I don't care who it is. It could be your brother, your sister, your mother, your wife, anybody. If they are not into this word, most like God say, don't be unequally yoked with them. You 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 just need to put it to a halt. Like, I don't know, you go ahead on. I can't do that. I'm not doing that. You know, 
You might be a pariah to him, but the fact is, once you start getting serious about this word, most high God, you say you cannot be unequally yoked with him. Because, you know, you're trying to live in a world of righteousness, and, they, and like I'm saying, this world is for them. It's going to be their damnation. All right, continue. Second Corinthians 6 and 15. What well, conqueror that Christ would bow, or a part hath he that believe, believeth with an infidel. If you're walking like the Messiah, Yahweh Shad, Jesus the Christ, or whichever one you want to call him, then you should know that he did not make deals with Satan or devils. He don't have agreements with any of them. We should not get comfortable doing business with shady people also. This is a great lesson to know. Do business with other Israelites whenever possible. Because once you get into this truth, you look for like-minded people to, to be in a business with. You know, you don't continue to deal with devils. You know, the fact is, you, you're going to have to deal with devils because most like God put us in the hands of these wicked people, but, you know, once you get into this truth, you start seeking those like yourself, and don't have don't have dealings with with people that that are uh, uh, in this world. All right, let's get, continue on Second Corinthians six and sixteen. Well, agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. The, the Most High makes. No agreements with idols. His name is jealous. He does not do shared environments. Looks like I don't do shared environments. Let's read Exodus 34 and 14. See, this is the name, I'm going to read that. But thou shalt worship the other God. For the Lord, his name is jealous, is a jealous God. Most like God tell you his name is jealous. Why nobody always talk about Yahweh shall this and Yahweh and all this other stuff? Why don't never use his name? Jealous. You know, I am that I am. Yeah, that, that that's one of his names. But why y'all don't use this name? He said, I, for I, my name is jealous. He said, my name is jealous, and I'm jealous. So he giving you another attribute, telling you that I'm jealous. Our father would never accept another god in his house, except his children under him. So. The fact is, we should understand that the Most High God is not going to accept another God in his house. And he will accept you in his house serving another God. That was the problem he had with us in the beginning anyway. You in his house, the, the, the place that he established, you in his house, while he had his tabernacle, where he, where he was able to look out from uh, beyond the veil and watch your simple butt worshiping other gods. Continue on, let's second Second Corinthians six and seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Our God never intended for us to mingle with other nations. Let's get that proof. Exodus 23 and 32. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The Israelites are not supposed to make agreements with the other nations or with their gods. So when the Most High God is telling you to come from among them and be ye separate like he, he had us, arranged us in the beginning, he's still serious about that. He don't, you know, this is how the world wants you to remain because the fact is, if you are remaining acting like everybody else, what does that make you? What does that make you if you're acting like everybody else? That makes you a worldly person? Hmm? That makes you somebody in the world? Okay, I accept that answer, but what make what that makes you? Sinner? Okay, I accept that too. But what does that make you? What type? What type of person? Because they always, you know, what 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 is an Israelite? What's the opposite of an Israelite? Gentile. Gentile or heathen. So, if you are in in a belief of the Bible, like all the so-called Christian nations believe that everybody God loves everybody, everybody's supposed to be. Yeah, together 
And the Most High God is telling you to come from among them. If you're not coming from among them, then what are you? This is the question. If you're not coming from among them, then what are you? What's the what's what's op, 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 opposition of Israelite? What what's opposing Israelite then? A Gentile. A Gentile. So if you want to be like them, when the Most High God told you not to come, like like right here, Exodus twenty three and thirty two. We don't make agreements with them, no covenants, nor with their gods. That that addresses Second Corinthians six and fifteen and six and sixteen. Thou make no covenant with them nor their gods. The Israelites are not supposed to make agreements with the other nations or with their gods. All right, let's get thir uh, th uh, 33, Exodus 23 and 33. Read that. They shall not dwell in thy land. They shall not dwell where? In thy land. So, it's, uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, most like God told us to come from among them because he don't want us dwelling in the land. We want them dwelling in our land. Come on. Lest they make thee sin against me, for if thou serve their gods, they will surely be a snare unto thee. This is why the most like God told us to come from among them. He don't want us serving their gods because that's going to cause us to sin. Because that that, that sub sub to, sub sub to, subtly subtly, you know, because these white folks are subtle in their sins, and these, these other nations are subtle with their gods. You know, they they give you they give you their gods in a subtle manner, and you don't even know it. You know, you know, uh. uh all the things they do over the meat, they you know they they, they sacrifice the meat and all that stuff. Y'all buy you you women buying all this hair that they they don't uh, gave to that god Vishnu. You know the Indians don't cut off and gave to that god Vishnu, and they don't sacrifice it to their god, and then they selling it to you. That's why the Most High God told you to come from among them, because you are gonna be worshiping their gods in in a manner. They are subtle in in, in giving you their gods, the things that you buy. Israelites are not supposed to live among the other nations because the other nations and their gods are making us sin against the Most High God, and He will, and we will be a snare against us, and it will be a snare against us. All right, continue on. Second Corinthians six and eighteen, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. This is when the Most High God will be a father to us, and we will be his sons and daughters. Because once we separate from the other nations and start rehearsing the righteous acts, and start keeping his commandments, and not being abominable to the Most High God, and doing all the abominable things that the Most High God hates, and stop acting like the other nations, trying to be like Esau, Trying to act like Esau, doing all the things that Esau loved, influencing you to do the things that Esau loved, and, and, and him minimizing your God that you that that loves you and only you. Most like God is just only you know He keeps covenant with us, and the things that's in His covenant, it's it's nothing that He didn't tell us that He was He was going to do to us if we didn't keep uh, keep His commandments. You know, because the flip side of, of Deuteronomy 28, if we observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which he had commanded us this day, that he would place us high above all nations, if we observe to do his commandments. But if we didn't want to do his commandments, he was going to curse us in so many unimaginable ways that we are, we are being cursed today. He didn't tell us, you know, he keeps covenants. You know, he say what he say, and like I said, the thing about it is, his word is bond. I told you what I, I, I told you what I was going to do. You know, we should not be. I don't know why this is happening. You, you should not be surprised if you knew your Elohim. You should not be surprised if you know your Elohim. If you know that he 
is doing the things to you as he told you that he was going to do because you being wicked? No, you're not being wicked because most people, like I said, wickedness is knowing something is sinful and doing it anyway. Some of y'all being wicked. But being in sin, sometimes you're in sin and you don't know because you don't know your God. You don't know what your God told you to do and you don't know what your God told you not to do. So y'all got to figure that out in your mind and, and, and try to get some wisdom. Now, I can't force feed wisdom in you, nor can the Most High. Some of y'all up on the earth for 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 uh for fuel for, for fuel to the fire because you were here before you were wicked then most like God is, is put place you he had to place you back upon this earth to just make you fuel for the flames because this is your final this is your final destination there won't be no more returning back upon the earth being wicked no more once you die this time you're dead for good. And your and your and your and your destination is going to be determined this time. You're not going to be returning to be wicked and be given another chance. Your wicked ass is going to get be put to death and be put in that flame of fire. Because the Most High God is giving you like I said. The fact is that's why the Most High God tells you all the time to pray for your forefathers because that was you before you left this earth the last time. Pray for your sins. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Acts 3 and 19 that your sins may be blotted out all them lives you live and them sins that you did can be blotted out and the time of refreshing appear before the Lord so I just want to I just want to show you the things that the most I God hate do not the abominations the abominable things that the Most High God hates. He tells you what He hates. He's been telling us what He hates for the longest. The things that placed us in captivities and, and, and all the things that He's allowed these other nations to do to us that are being done to us right now. But I, I'm telling you, you know, I. I need relief from all of the, you know, the fact is, if I could just repent myself and be, you know, the most I got doesn't work like that. If I can just repent myself and be taken up and, and, and it's all resolved on, for me, you know, it, 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 like a lot of people would just like, okay, that must be something to it. He repented and, and now he got favor from the most I got and, and, you know, he got, he got this and he got that and the most I got has blessed him and, and, and put a shield around him and all this stuff and, and he's safe now. But that ain't how it works. The most I are looking for the nation of Israel to repent because we went into slavery together. We're being punished together. You know, you Hispanic people, y'all like I'm saying y'all being punished with us too. Y'all don't y'all don't look across the, the fence of saying, you know, black people and, and you know, y'all are our people. You guys just got raped out a little bit more than we did because you know what? This white man came up on y'all and changed your color. Y'all was dark like us when, when before he showed up. So some of y'all was my color when, when you know before this so-called white man showed up. So just understand, you know, this, the whole nation of Israel is being punished right now. But anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. Again, I like to thank my 18,000, almost 900 Facebook. 18,900, almost. I think I've got a few, 18,897 or something like that. Last I looked. Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. I'm not doing much on YouTube. Uh, about two and a half years ago, they. They said that my lessons were not appropriate for all users, so I understood that. And, you know, I also like to thank all of those who are still watching my, my videos on YouTube without any advertisement or anything. And, you know, I'm still getting blessed with some, with some people watching. And, um, 
my Facebook page and my YouTube page. Facebook first, it's the ad side, live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word. My YouTube page is live, Shabbat, class. It's all one word there also. You know, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, like, uh, uh, leave your comments. Now, if you are not of my nation, as I say all, all in all my lessons, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native American, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the island, product of the Sub-Saharan and the Transatlantic slave trade. If you are not of those people, please do not leave your negative comments on my page because this lesson uh, in any of my classes does not pertain to your salvation. It has nothing to do with you. It's, on, it's only talking to those people to bring them to remembrance of who they are according to the Most High God. That they must keep the commandments of the Most High and do His will and practice the righteous acts so that they can get the kingdom when Christ returns. Please do not leave your negative comments. Feel free to watch, but this lesson is, you know, respectfully not for you. I didn't, I didn't make it for you. Y'all got a lot of stuff that's for you. Apparently, just this stuff, this is not for you. You know, not being a, yeah, I am. You know, just like y'all being prejudiced against me, I'm, I'm being about the Most High God's people. So, anyway. Hope you guys got some out of this. And with that, family and friends, I like to say shalom. Shalom.